Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today we're going to talk about the power of thought. In particular, I want to read some amazing writing from Swami Shivananda, who wrote a book called Thought Power. And there's some amazing portions that I want to read from you. One of the main ideas behind this podcast is the power of our thoughts. And we try to analyze it from a variety of different angles and facets using classic new thought authors and biblical teachings and science. And this particular book really discusses thought and allows us to understand its nature and how ultimately it is the architect of our destiny. Swami Shivananda was an amazing guru who lived from 1887 to 1963, who was a proponent of Vedanta and he taught yoga and wrote over 200 books. And many of them are really enlightening about a variety of different subjects. And I really like what he has to say about the power of thought. Joseph Murphy was a friend and had met Shivananda as he discusses in our episode, Dreams Bring Counsel. So I was interested in looking into more information by him and I find this highly relevant and educational on the power of thought. He begins by saying, if the mind dwells continually upon one train of thought, a groove is formed into which the thought force runs automatically and such a habit of thought survives death and since it belongs to the ego is carried over to the subsequent earth life as a thought tendency and capacity. Every thought, it must be remembered, has got its own mental image. The essence of the various mental images formed in one particular physical life is being worked out in the mental plane. It constitutes the basis for the next physical life. Just as a new physical body is formed in every birth, so also a new mind and a new buddhi are formed in every birth. Not easy is the act of explaining the detailed workings of thought and destiny. Every karma produces twofold effect, one on the individual mind and the other on the world. Man makes the circumstances of his future life by the effect of his actions upon others. Every action has a past which leads up to it. Every action has a future which proceeds from it. An action implies a desire which prompted it and a thought which shaped it. Each thought is a link in an endless chain of causes and effects, each effect becoming a cause and each cause having been an effect, and each link in the endless chain is welded out of three components, desire, thought, and activity. A desire stimulates a thought, a thought embodies itself as an act, an act constitutes the web of destiny. Selfish coveting of the possessions of others, thought never carried out into active cheating in the present, makes one a thief in a later life, while hatred and revenge secretly cherished are the seeds from which the murderer springs. So again, unselfish, loving yields as harvest the philanthropist and the saint, and every thought of compassion helps to build the tender and pitiful nature which belongs to one who is a friend to all creatures. Recognize the great powers of thought. By right thinking, make for yourself a great destiny. You sow in action and reap a habit. A habit sown results in character. You sow a character and reap a destiny. Man is the master of his own destiny. You yourself make, by the power of your thought, your destiny. You can undo it if you like. All faculties, energies, and powers are latent in you. Unfold them and become free and great. Thoughts chisel your countenance. Your face is like a gramophone record or plate. Whatever you think is at once written on your face. Every vicious thought serves as a chisel or needle to write down the thoughts on your countenance. Your faces are covered with scars and wounds which are made by the vicious thoughts of hatred, anger, lust, jealousy, revenge. From the nature of the scar on your face, we can at once read your state of mind. 
we can at once diagnose the disease of your mind. He who thinks he can hide his thoughts is a dunce of the first water. His position is like that of the ostrich, which, when chased by the hunters, hides its head underneath the sand and imagines that it cannot be seen by anyone. Face is the index of the mind. Face is the mold of the mind. Every thought cuts a groove in the face. A divine thought brightens the face. An evil thought darkens the face. Continued divine thoughts increase the aura or halo. Continued evil thoughts increase the depth of dark impressions, just as the continued striking of a vessel against the edge of a well while drawing water makes deeper and deeper hollow on the vessel. The facial expression truly advertises the inner state of the mind or the true contents of the mind. The face is like an advertisement board wherein is advertised what is going on inside the mind. Your thoughts, sentiments, modes, and emotions produce their strong impressions on the face. In your face, you can hardly hide your thoughts. You may wrongly think that you have kept up your thoughts in secret. The thoughts of lust, greed, jealousy, anger, revenge, hatred, etc. at once produce their deep impressions on your face. The face is a faithful recorder and a sensitive registering apparatus to register and record all the thoughts that are in your mind. The face is a polished mirror to indicate the nature of the mind and its contents at a particular time. Thoughts feature the physical expressions. Mind is the subtle form of this physical body. The physical body is the outward manifestation of the thoughts. So when the mind is wrought, the body is wrought too. A man of rough appearance generally cannot invoke love and mercy of others. So a rough-minded man cannot invoke love and mercy of anybody. Mind very conspicuously reflects on the face its various states, which a man of intelligence can very easily read. The body follows the mind. If the mind thinks of falling from a height, the body prepares itself immediately and shows external signs. Fear, anxiety, grief, cheerfulness, hilarity, anger all produce their various impressions on the face. Your eyes betray your thoughts. The eyes which represent the windows of the soul bespeak of the condition and state of the mind. There is a telegraphic instrument in the eyes to transmit the messages or thoughts of treachery, depression, gloom, hatred, cheerfulness, peace, harmony, health, power, strength, and beauty. If you have the faculty to read the eyes of others, you can read the mind at once. You can read the uppermost thought or dominant thought of a man if you are careful to mark the signs in his face conversation and behavior. It needs a little pluck, acumen, training, intelligence, and experience. Negative thoughts poison life. Thoughts of worry and thoughts of fear are fearful forces within us. They poison the very sources of life and destroy the harmony, the running efficiency, the vitality and vigor. The opposite thoughts of cheerfulness, joy and courage heal, soothe instead of irritating and immensely augment efficiency and multiply the mental powers. Be always cheerful, smile and laugh. Thought exerts influence over the body. Grief in the mind weakens the body. Body influences the mind also in its turn. A healthy body makes the mind healthy. If body is sick, the mind also becomes sick. If the body is strong and healthy, the mind also becomes healthy and strong. Violent fits of hot temper do serious damage to the brain cells, throw poisonous chemical products into the blood, produce general shock and depression, and suppress the secretion of gastric juice, bile, and other digestive juices in the alimentary canal, drain away your energy, vitality, induce premature old age, and shorten life. When you're angry, the mind becomes undisturbed. Similarly, when the mind is disturbed, the body also becomes disturbed. The whole nervous system is agitated. You become enervated. Control anger by love. Anger is a powerful energy that is uncontrollable by practical Vyarvaharic Buddhai, but controllable by pure reason, Sattvic Buddhai, or Vivek Vichara, the creative powers of thought. Thought creates the world. Thought brings things into existence. Thoughts develop the desires and excite the passions. 
So the contrary thoughts of killing the desires and passions will counteract the former idea of satisfying the desires. So when a person is impressed with this, a contrary thought will help him to destroy his desires and passions. Think of a person as a good friend of yours, and there the thing is created as a reality. Think of him as your foe, then also the mind perfects the thought into an actuality. He who knows the workings of the mind and has controlled it by practice is really happy. In the thought world also, the great law, like attracts like, operates. People of similar thoughts are attracted towards each other. That is the reason why the maxims run as follows. Birds of the same feather flock together. A man is known by the company he keeps. A doctor is drawn towards a doctor. A poet has attraction for another poet. A songster loves another songster. A philosopher likes another philosopher. A vagabond likes a vagabond. The mind has got a drawing power. You are continually attracting towards you from both the seen and the unseen sides of life forces, thoughts, influences, and conditions most akin to those of your own thoughts and lines. In the realm of thought, people of similar thoughts are attracted to one another. This universal law is continually operating whether we are conscious of it or not. Carry any kind of thought you please about with you and so long as you retain it. No matter how you roam over the land or sea, you will unceasingly attract to yourself knowingly or inadvertently exactly and only what corresponds to your own dominant quality of thought. Thoughts are your private property and you can regulate them to suit your taste entirely by steadily recognizing your ability to do so. You have entirely in your own hands to determine the order of thought you entertain and consequently the order of influence you attract and are not mere willowy creatures of circumstances unless indeed you choose to be. Mental actions are real actions. Thought is the real action. It is a dynamic force. It may be remembered. Thought is very contagious, nay, more contagious than the Spanish flu. A sympathetic thought in you raises a sympathetic thought in others with whom you come in contact. A thought of anger produces a similar vibration in those who surround an angry man. It leaves the brain of one man and enters the brains of others who live at a long distance and excites them. A cheerful thought in you produces cheerful thoughts in others. You are filled with joy and intense delight when you see a batch of hilarious children playing mirthfully and dancing in joy. A thought of joy in us creates sympathetically a thought of joy in others. So do sublime elevating thoughts. Keep a good and honest man in the company of a thief, he will begin to steal. Keep a sober man in the company of a drunkard, he will begin to drink. Thought is very contagious. Keep the heart young. Do not think I have become old. To think I have become old is a bad habit. Do not entertain this thought at 60. Think I am 16. As you think, so you become. This is a great psychological law. As a man thinketh, so he becometh. This is a great truth or truism. Think I am strong. Strong you become. Think I am weak. Weak you become. Think I am a fool. A fool you become. Think I am a sage or God. A sage or God you become. Thought alone shapes and molds a man. Man lives always in a world of thoughts. Every man has his own thought world. Imagination works wonders. Thought has tremendous force. Thought, as already said, is a solid thing. Your present is the result of your past thoughts, and your future will be according to your present thoughts. If you think rightly, you will speak rightly and act rightly. Speech and action simply follow the thoughts. Understand the laws of thought. Every man should have a comprehensive understanding of the laws of thought and their operations. Then alone one can live in this world smoothly and happily. He can utilize the helping forces to serve his ends in the best possible manner. He can neutralize the hostile forces or antagonistic currents. Just as the fish swims against the current, so also he will be able to go against the hostile currents by adjusting himself properly 
and safeguarding through suitable precautionary methods. Otherwise he becomes a slave. He is tossed about hither and thither, helplessly by various currents. He is drifted like a wooden plank in a river. He is a very miserable and unhappy, always, although he is wealthy and possesses everything. The captain of a steamer who has mariner's compass, who has knowledge of the sea, the routes, and the oceanic currents can sail smoothly. Otherwise, his steamer will be drifted here and there and helplessly wrecked by dashing against some icebergs or rocks. Likewise, a wise sailor in the ocean of this life who has a detailed knowledge of the laws of thought and nature can sail smoothly and reach the goal of his life positively. Understanding the laws of thought, you can mold or shape your character in any way you like. The common saying, as a man thinketh so he becometh, is one of the great laws of thought. Think you are pure, pure you will become. Think you are noble, noble you will become. Become an embodiment of good nature. Think good of all. Do always good actions. Serve, love, give, make others happy. Live to serve others. Then you will reap happiness. You will get favorable circumstances or opportunities and environments. If you hurt others, if you do scandal-mongering, mischief-mongering, backbiting, tail-bearing, if you exploit others, if you acquire the property of others by foul means, if you do any action that can give pain to others, you will reap pain. You will get unfavorable circumstances or opportunities and environments. This is the law of thought and nature. Just as you can build your good or bad character by sublime or base thinking, so also you can shape your favorable or unfavorable circumstances by doing good or bad actions. A man of discrimination is always careful, vigilant, and circumspect. He always watches carefully his thoughts. He introspects. He knows what is going on in his mental factory, what Viridi or Guna is prevailing at a particular time. He never allows any evil thought to enter the gates of his mental factory. He at once nips them in the bud. By his good thinking, by watching the nature of his thoughts, by introspection, by active noble thinking, the man of discrimination builds his noble character, forms his high destiny. He is careful in his speeches. He speaks little. He speaks sweet, loving words. He never utters any kind of harsh words that can affect the feelings of others. He develops patience, mercy, and universal love. He tries to speak truth. Thus, he puts a check on the impulses of speech. He uses measured words. He writes measured lines. This produces deeply profound and favorable impression on the minds of people. He practices ahimsa and brahmachira in thought, word, and deed. He practices saucha and arjava, straightforwardness. He tries to keep up balance of mind and to be always cheerful. He keeps up suda bhava. He tries these three kinds of tapas, physical, verbal, and mental, and controls his actions. He cannot think any evil. He cannot do any evil action. He prepares himself to get always favorable circumstances. He who spreads happiness will always get such favorable circumstances as can bring him happiness. He who spreads pain to others will doubtless get according to the law of thought such unfavorable circumstances as can bring him misery and pain. Therefore man creates his own character and circumstances by the manner of his own thinking. Bad character can be transmuted into good one. By good thoughts and unfavorable circumstances can be changed into favorable circumstances by doing good actions. As you think, so you become. As are your thoughts, so must be your life. Improve your thinking. Better thoughts bring better actions. Mere thinking of the objects of this world is pain. Bondage is caused by the very act of thought. Pure thought is a mightier force than electricity. The mind which is attracted by objects of sense tends to bondage, while that which is not so attracted tends to emancipation. Mind is a bandit. Slay this mind bandit. You will be happy and free forever. Manifest all your strengths in the task of conquering your mind. This is true manliness. Self-denial is a means to the purification and refinement of mind. Purify and still the thoughts. The layers of ignorance covering the knowledge will not be removed without a calm mind. The subtle part of 
food forms the mind. Mind is manufactured out of food. The subtle part of food is transformed into mind. Food does not mean merely what we eat, but what we gather through all our senses. Learn to see God everywhere. This is real food for the eye. Purity of thought depends upon purity of food. You can see better, hear better, taste better, think better when you entertain sublime divine thoughts. Look at an object through a green or red glass. The object appears green or red. Even so, the objects are colored by the desires through the mirror mind. All mental states are transitory. They produce pain and sorrow. Have freedom of thought. Free yourself from the slavery of prejudice that blunts intellect and dulls thoughts. Think of the immoral Atman. This is the right method of direct original thinking. The Atman reveals itself after the purification of thoughts. When the mind is serene without any want, without any motive, without any craving or desire or thought, without any compulsion, without hope, then the Supreme Altman shines. This is the experience of bliss. Live the way in which saints live. This is the only way to victory over thoughts, mind, and lower self. And until you have conquered mind, there can be no sure and permanent victory. Be careful of your thoughts. Whatever you send out of your mind comes back to you. Every thought you think is a boomerang. If you hate another, hate will come back to you. If you love others, love will come back to you. An evil thought is thrice cursed. First, it harms the thinker by doing injury to his mental body. Secondly, it harms the person who is the object. Lastly, it harms all mankind by vitiating the whole mental atmosphere. Every evil thought is a sword drawn on the person to whom it is directed. If you entertain thoughts of hatred, you are really a murderer of that man against whom you foster thoughts of hatred. You are your own suicide because these thoughts rebound upon you only. A mind tenanted by evil thoughts acts as a magnet to attract like thoughts from others and thus intensifies the original evil. Evil thoughts thrown into the mental atmosphere poison receptive minds. To dwell on an evil thought gradually deprives it of its repulsiveness and impels the thinker to perform an action which embodies it. Thoughts are like the waves of an ocean. They are countless. You may become desperate in the beginning of your attempt to conquer them. Some thoughts will subside, while some other thoughts will gush out like a stream. The same old thoughts that were once suppressed may again show their faces after some time. Never become despondent at any stage of practice. You will surely get inner spiritual strength. You are bound to succeed in the end. All the yogins of yore had to encounter the same difficulties that you are experiencing now. The process of destruction of mental modifications is difficult and long. All thoughts cannot be destroyed in a day or two. You should not give up the practice of destroying the thoughts in the middle when you come across some difficulties or stumbling blocks. The Buddha declared, All that we are is made up of our thoughts. It is our thoughts that cause the round of births, so we should always strive to purify our thoughts. When we go and sit near a sage, we feel a unique calmness, but if we are in the company of a bad and selfish person, we feel uneasy. It is because the vibrations of peace and calmness emanate from the aura of the sage, whereas from the aura of the selfish person emanate vibrations of evil and selfish thoughts. The second effect of thought is the creation of a definite form. The quality and the nature of a thought determine the color and the clearness of that thought form. A thought form is a living entity and it has strong tendency to carry out the intention of the thinker. Blue thought forms denote devotion. The thought form of self-renunciation is of the loveliest pale azure with white light shining through it. Thought forms of selfishness, pride, and anger are of gray, brown, orange, and red color, respectively. We are always surrounded by these thought forms, and our minds are seriously affected by them. Not one-fourth of our thoughts are our own, but are simply picked up from the atmosphere. Mostly they are of evil nature, so we should always utter God's name mentally. It will always protect us from their evil influence. Particularly around minds of highly developed thought power, we sense the manifest phenomenon of a powerful aura. The palpable influence of highly developed mind over a less developed mind needs to be specially marked. 
It is not possible to provide a description of what it is like to be in the presence of a master or a developed adept. To sit in his presence, though he hardly speaks a word, is to feel a thrilling sensation and discover the impacts of new inspirations that it yields on our minds. Mind carries aura, mental aura or psychic aura. The Sanskrit term for aura is tehas. It is brilliant or halo that emanates from the phenomenon of mind. And those who have sought the full development of their minds, we find it extremely effulgent. It is capacitated to travel long distances and affect in the most beneficial manner a large number of persons who are privileged to come under its influence. It must be noted that the spiritual aura is far more powerful than either psychic or pranic or mental aura. People of gloomy moods attract themselves gloomy things and gloomy thoughts from others and from Akashic records in the physical ether. Persons with hope, confidence, and cheerful spirits attract thoughts of similar nature from others. They are always successful in their attempts. People with negative moods of depression, anger, and hatred do positively injure to others. They infect others and raise these destructive streams of consciousness in others. They are culpable. They do great damage in the thought world. People with happy and cheerful moods are a blessing to society. They bring happiness to others. Just as a young, beautiful lady covers her face and does not like to come out to mix with others in society when she has a nasty, festering sore on her cheeks or nose, also you should not come in public and mix with your friends and other people when you are of a mood of depression, a mood of hatred or jealousy, for you will infect others with these moods. You will be a menace to the society. Thought actually leaves the brain and hovers about. When a thought, whether good or evil, leaves the mind of a person, it gives rise to vibrations in the manas or mental atmosphere which travel far and wide in all directions. It enters the brains of others also. A sage living in a Himalayan cave transmits a powerful thought to a corner of America. He who tries to purify himself in a cave really purifies the world, helps the world at large. Nobody can prevent his pure thoughts coming out and passing on to those others that really want them. Just as the sun goes on continuously converting into vapor, every drop of water that is on the surface of the earth, and just all the vapor thus rising up gathers together in the form of clouds, all the thoughts that you project from your own lonely corner will mount up and be wafted across space. Join similar thoughts projected by those who are like you, and in the end, all these holy thoughts will come down with tremendous force to subjugate undesirable forces. You can influence another man without any audible language. What is wanted is concentration of thought that is directed by the will. This is telepathy. Here's an exercise for your practice in telepathy. Think of your friend or cousin who is living in a distant land. Bring a clear-cut image of his face to your mind. If you have his photo, look at it and speak to it audibly. When you retire to bed, think of the picture with intense concentration. He will write to you the desired letter the following day or so. Try this yourself. Do not doubt. You will be quite surprised. You will get success and firm conviction in the science of telepathy. Sometimes when you are writing something or reading a newspaper, suddenly you get a message from someone near or dear to you. You think of him suddenly. He has sent a message to you. He has thought of you seriously. Thought vibrations travel faster than light or electricity. In such instances, the subconscious mind receives messages or impressions and transmits the same to the conscious mind. The science of thought power is very interesting and subtle. This thought world is more real relatively than this physical universe. The power of thought is very great. Every thought of yours has a literal value to you in every possible way. The strength of your body, the strength of your mind, your success in life, and the pleasures you give to others by your company all depend on the nature and quality of your thoughts. You must know thought culture and develop thought power. If you have a comprehensive understanding of the workings of the thought vibrations, if you know the technique of controlling the thoughts, if you know the method of transmitting beneficial thoughts to others at a distance by forming clear-cut, well-defined, powerful thought waves, you can use this thought power a thousand-fold more effectively. Thought works wonders. A wrong thought binds. A right thought liberates. 
Therefore, think rightly and attain freedom. Unfold the occult powers hidden within you by understanding and realizing the powers of the mind. Close your eyes. Slowly concentrate. You can see distant objects, hear distant sounds, send messages to any part not only of this world, but of the other planets as well. Heal persons thousands of miles off from you and move about to distant places in no time. Believe in the powers of the mind. Interest, attention, will, faith, and concentration will bring the desired fruit. Remember that mind is born of the Atman through his Maya or illusory power. You can aid a friend in trouble by transmitting to him thoughts of comfort right from the place where you are. You can help a friend in search of truth by thoughts clear and definite of the truths you know. You can send into the mental atmosphere thoughts which will raise, purify, and inspire all who are sensible to them. If you send out a loving, helpful thought to another man, it leaves your brain, goes directly to that man, raises a similar thought of love in his mind, and returns back to you with redoubled force. If you send out a thought of hatred to another man, it hurts that man and hurts you also by turning back to you with redoubled force. Therefore, understand the laws of thought. Raise only thoughts of mercy, love, and kindness from your mind, and be happy always. When you send out a useful thought to help others, it must have a definite, positive purpose and aim. Then only will it bring out the desired effect. Then only that thought will accomplish a definite work. Gain a clear understanding of suggestions and their effects upon the mind. You should be careful in the use of suggestions. Never give wrong suggestion which will have destructive results to anybody. You'll be doing a great harm and a disservice to him. Think well before you speak. Teachers and professors should have a thorough knowledge of the science of suggestion and auto-suggestion. They can educate and elevate students in an efficient manner. In southern India, when children cry out in houses, parents frighten them by saying, Look here, Balu. The two-eyed man has come. Keep quiet or I will hand you over to this man. Or Puchandi, the ghost has come. And suggestions of this sort are very destructive. The child becomes timid. The minds of children are elastic, tender, and pliable. Changing or obliterating the bad thoughts becomes impossible when they grow. When the child grows into a man, he manifests timidity. Parents should infuse courage into the minds of their children. They should say, here is a lion. See the lion in this picture. Roar like a lion. Be courageous. See the picture of Shivaji, Arjuna, or Clive. Become chivalrous. In the West, teachers show pictures of battlefields to children and say, Look here, James. See this picture of Napoleon? Look at his chivalry. Won't you like to become a commander-in-chief of the army or a brigadier general? They infuse courage into the minds of children from their very childhood. When they grow, these get strengthened by additional external stimuli. Practice telepathy in the beginning from a short distance. It is better to practice at night to start with. Ask your friend to have the receptive attitude and concentrate at 10 o'clock. Ask him to sit with his eyes closed in a dark room. Try to send your messages exactly at the appointed time. Concentrate on the thoughts that you want to send. Will strongly now. The thoughts will leave your brain and enter the brain of your friend. There may be some mistakes in the beginning, here, and there. When you advance in practice and know the technique well, you will always be correct in sending and receiving messages. Later on, you'll be able to forward messages to different corners of the world Thought waves vary in intensity and force. The sender and receiver should practice great and intense concentration. Then there will be force in sending the messages, clarity and accuracy in receiving the messages. Practice in the beginning telepathy from one room to the next room in the same house. The science is very pleasant and interesting. It needs patient practice. Practice of telepathy, thought reading, hypnotism, mesmerism, and psychic healing clearly proves that the mind exists and that a higher mind can influence and subjugate the lower mind. From the automatic writing and the experiences of a hypnotized person, we can clearly infer the existence of the subconscious mind, which operates through the 24 hours. Thought is life. What you think, that you are. Your thought creates your environment. Your thoughts constitute your world. If you entertain healthy thoughts, you can keep good health. If you hold on to sickly thoughts in the mind, thoughts of diseased tissues, thoughts of weak nerves, thoughts of improper functioning of organs, you can never expect good health, beauty, and harmony. 
Remember that a body is a product of the mind and is under the control of the mind. If you hold on to vigorous thoughts, your body too will be vigorous. Thoughts of love, peace, contentment, purity, perfection, divinity will make you and also others around you perfect and divine. Cultivate divine thoughts. Divine thoughts elevate the mind and expand the heart. A base thought excites the mind and renders the feelings morbid and dark. Those who have even a little control over their thoughts and speech will have a calm, serene, beautiful, charming face, a sweet voice, and their eyes will turn brilliant and lustrous. Every thought or emotion or word produces a strong vibration in every cell of the body and leaves a strong impression there. If you know the method of raising an opposite thought, then you can lead a happy, harmonious life of peace and power. Thought of love will at once neutralize a thought of hatred. A thought of courage will immediately serve as a powerful antidote against the thought of fear. Man sows a thought and reaps an action. He sows an action and reaps a habit. He sows a habit and reaps a character. He sows a character and reaps a destiny. Man has made his own destiny by his own thinking and acting. He can change his destiny. He is the master of his own destiny. There is no doubt of this. By right thinking and strong exertion, he can become the master of his destiny. Every change in thought makes a vibration in your mental body, and this, when transmitted to the physical body, causes activity in the nervous matter of your brain. This matter in the nervous cells causes many electrical and chemical changes in them. It is thought activity which causes these changes. When the mind is turned to a particular thought and dwells on it, a definite vibration of matter is set up and often more of this vibration is caused. The more does it tend to repeat itself, to become a habit, to become automatic. The body follows the mind and imitates its changes. If you concentrate your thought, the eyes become fixed. It is often said that man is the result of his environmental forces. This is not true. We cannot believe this because the facts always prove the contrary. Many of the world's greatest men have been born in poverty and in adverse circumstances. Many who have been born in the slums and filthy surroundings have risen to the highest status in the world. They have won laurels of fame and distinguished themselves in politics, literature, and poetry. They have become brilliant geniuses and beacon lights of the world. How do you account for this? Man is certainly not a creature of environments or circumstances. He can control and modify them by his capacities, character, thoughts, good actions, and right exertion. There is no limit to the power of human thought. The more concentrated the human mind is, the more power is brought to bear on one point. The rays of the mind are scattered in the case of the worldly-minded person. There is a dissipation of mental energy in various directions. For purposes of concentration, these scattered rays have to be gathered by the practice of concentration, and then the mind must be made to turn towards God. Cultivate attention. You will have a good concentration. A serene mind is fit for concentration. Keep the mind serene. Be cheerful always. Then, alone, can you concentrate. Be regular in your concentration. Sit in the same place at the same time. Destroy random thinking. Take a subject and think of its different aspects and bearing. When you think so on one subject, never allow any other thought to enter your conscious mind. Withdraw the mind again to the subject on hand. Every sensual thought rejected, every temptation resisted, every harsh word withheld, every noble aspiration encouraged helps you to develop willpower or soul force and takes you nearer and nearer to the goal. With strong feeling, repeat mentally, my will is powerful, pure, and irresistible. Om, Om, Om. I can do everything through my will. Om, Om, Om. I have the invincible will. Om, Om, Om. Will is the dynamic soul force when it operates all the mental powers, such as the power of judgment, power of memory, power of grasping, power of conversation, reasoning power, power of discrimination, Reflection, inference, all these things come into instant play. Will is the king of mental powers. When rendered pure and irresistible, thought and will can work wonders. Will becomes impure and weak through vulgar passions, love of pleasures and desires. 
The lesser the number of desires, the stronger is the thought power and the will when sexual energy, the muscular energy, anger, are transmuted into the will force, they are controlled. There is nothing impossible on earth for a man of strong will power. When you think on one subject, do not allow other thoughts to enter. When you think of a rose, think of the different kinds of roses only. Do not allow other thoughts to enter. When you think of mercy, think of mercy and mercy only. Do not think of forgiveness and tolerance. When you study the Gita, do not think of tea or a cricket match. Be wholly occupied with the subject on hand. Napoleon controlled his thoughts in this manner. When I want to think of things more pleasant, I close the cupboards of my mind, revealing the more unpleasant things of life, and open up the cupboards containing the more pleasant thoughts. If I want to sleep, I close up all the cupboards of my mind. Suppose the evil thoughts stay in your mind for 12 hours or recur every third day. If you can make them stay for 10 hours and recur once in a week by daily practice, concentration, and meditation, that is a decided improvement. If you continue your practice, the period of stay and recurrences will be gradually lessened. Eventually, they will disappear altogether. Compare your present state of mind with that of last year or year before. You will be able to find out your progress. At first... A wrong thought enters the mind. When you entertain a strong imagination, you take the light on dwelling on that wrong thought. You give consent to its stay in mind, and gradually, the wrong thought, when it is not resisted, takes a strong hold in your mind. Then it becomes very difficult to drive it off. The proverb goes, Give a rogue an inch, and he will take an L. This is true of wrong thoughts also. Just as you close your door or gate when a dog or an ass tries to come in, so also close your mind before any evil thought can enter and produce an impression on your physical brain. You'll become wise soon and attain eternal, infinite peace and bliss. Wipe out lust, greed, and egoism. Entertain only pure, holy thoughts. This is an uphill task, a difficult task. You will have to practice it. You will succeed in your attempt after some time. Your mind will sometimes shudder when evil thoughts enter your mind. This is a sign of your spiritual progress. You are growing spiritually. You'll be very much tormented when you think of your evil actions committed in the past. This is also a sign of your spiritual upheaval. You will not repeat now the same actions. Your mind will tremble. Your body will quiver whenever a wrong thought of some evil action urges you to do the same act through force of habit. Continue your meditation with full vigor and earnestness. All memories of evil actions, all evil thoughts, all evil promptings of Satan will die by themselves. You will be established in perfect purity and peace. Thought makes man. Man makes civilization. There's a powerful thought force behind every great event in life and in the history of the world. Behind all discoveries and inventions, behind all religions and philosophies, behind all life-saving or life-destroying devices, is thought. Thought is expressed in words and executed in deeds. Word is the handmaid of thought, and deed is the end result. Hence the saying, as you think, so you become. How to build a new civilization? By generating a new thought force. How to build a civilization that will ensure the peace of mankind, the prosperity of society, the salvation of the individual? By generating a thought force that will invariably result in man enjoying peace of mind, that will instill in his heart the divine virtues of compassion, of service to his fellow man, love of God, and an intense desire to realize him. If but a fraction of the wealth and the time spent on wasteful pursuits and destructive activities is devoted to the creation of a good thought, there will be a new civilization right now. What an ideal society it will be, where people share with others all that they possess and will serve everybody. Where will be the need for taxes and duties in such a society in which everyone will voluntarily work for all? Where is the need for police and the army when people are devoted to virtue? This then is the ideal. Towards this end, let everyone strive to generate a thought force. So a lot of this seems repetitive and maybe somewhat generic, but I found it to be powerful and a good summation of thought power in general. Understanding that I can see your thoughts on your face and I look at somebody's face, I know their thoughts. And the thought affects literally everything. And even though I talk about it all the time, you must put the weight of every thought that enters your mind 
as the most important thing in the world. There are no random thoughts that you can ignore. You need to respect every thought. And of course you're going to have bad or negative thoughts. But you can remove those thoughts by replacing it with something that is the opposite. By remembering the name of God. By continually monitoring the thoughts that come in and changing those thoughts by looking at the thought and the opposite of it. And if you continue to do that and follow these practices, you'll get better and better at it, as Shivananda explains. Thought is the most powerful thing in the world, and it has affected your life in every way, shape, and form. Everything you have is based on your thought. And so take this one thing from this episode that your thought is the most powerful thing and you can change the world with it and we together can create a new society with this thought power. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Mm-hmm.